Hello hackers, welcome to another Pi QT5 designer and PyCharm tutorial where I'm gonna walk you through the process from start to finish of how to use or how to build a horizontal slider. So to start with today, what we're gonna to look to do is come into our command prompt and obviously we're going to open up designer. Again, remember I'm using Python 3.7, so my command there is designer, whereas if you are using Python 3.8 or another version above that, you may need to type in pyqt5 designer to get your qt designer to open. Now from here, we are just gonna be creating ourselves a main window. We don't need the menu bar and we don't need the status bar. So I'm just gonna right click on each of those to remove them. Okay, and then my main window, I'm just gonna resize because we don't need it this big for the little short thing that we're gonna build. So I'm just gonna make that 300 by 200. Okay, so nice little small window here. We don't need anything larger than that for what we're looking to do today. So we just need two elements. We need a label, okay? So I'm gonna put my label there in the middle at the top. And then we also need a horizontal slider, okay? So the principles between this and a vertical slider are pretty much the same. Uh, obviously the, the difference is that the uh, line and the slider go in a different direction, but the way in which you're gonna set it up will remain mostly the same. So with our text label here, we do need to make sure that we change its object name so that it is easy for us to see. So I'm going to just, just call this one display underscore label. Okay, and then I'm gonna set this so that the font is a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna drag that out so it's pretty massive. Actually, let's uh, open it up this way. And I'm gonna just come all the way down to the bottom and make that text huge. I'm happy with the normal font. And I'm just gonna change this to say the number three at the moment. Okay, and the reason for that is I'm going to have it set to uh, the middle of the slider here. We're just gonna build one that goes from one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then whichever um, notch we're on on the slider, it's gonna display that number up there on our label. So moving down to our slider now with that selected, uh, we could leave this as horizontal slider because it is just the one element that's sitting there on screen, but so that we can get into the best practice of renaming each of our objects, I'm gonna just call this one number underscore slider. And then I'm going to sort of skip down a little bit and we're gonna have a look at some of the settings that we need to change here. Okay, so when you get down to your um, green box here, your abstract slider window, this is where you're going to start to change some of the values. So I'm going to set a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 5. I'm going to have my single step of 1, page step of 1, just so that it only moves 1 at a time, any time at all. I do want to set my value to 3 here, just so that at the start it matches up with the value that we're going to have typed in. Okay, obviously I could change that, but I want the slider to start in the middle and I do want a default text on my label to be the number three. Okay, and then from here, that's basically it. Now you do have the option as well to put little tick marks underneath. Okay, so if we turn that one on, we can open this little box here and change it to say like ticks below. Okay, in this instance, it's probably gonna work. You can see there's those tiny little lines underneath, which gives the user a bit of an idea on where they can drop that slider. Okay, and then the tick interval, I'm just gonna change to one so it knows that it can move one whole tick each time the slider is moved. Okay, so pretty simple stuff in terms of setting up our little window here. We have our label, which we've now called display label. Okay, we have our horizontal slider, which we have called number slider, and then we scroll down to the bottom of our properties editor and made some of those changes so that we can have it just from one to five, and then it starts in position number three. Okay, and then we added the ticks down below so that it makes it nice and easy for our user. So what we need to do from here is save our project so that we're ready to go. So I'm just gonna save this. I'm gonna find a nice easy spot on my D drive for this. So I'm just gonna go new folder and I might just call this number uh, slider tutorial. Okay, and then for my UI, I'm just gonna call it main window and then that'll save it as a UI file. Okay, now from here, obviously I need to jump into my editor for Python, which in my case is going to be PyCharm. All right, so I'm gonna just open up PyCharm here. So we have that on screen and I need to now go and create myself a new project so that I am editing in that folder. So from here, what I need to do is obviously just go and very quickly find what it is. Uh, where are we? 
number slider tutorial, so I've got the correct folder. Make sure that my existing interpreter is set at this stage. I don't want to be mucking around in a virtual environment, so I'm just going to check existing interpreter and make sure I have some form of Python sitting there in the interpreter box. Once I hit create, it gives me the normal warning. This folder is not empty. Do you want to continue? We say yes, and I want to do it in this window. So that now gives me my file, so I can see I have my main window.ui file here, which is my XML code, which is of no real use to us at this point in time. So I need to convert that. So I'm gonna come down to the terminal at the bottom. Okay, and from the terminal in the bottom, I'm gonna type in pi uic5. Okay, type in the name of the file I wish to convert. So that's gonna be main window.ui hyphen O for output, and then I've got to give it a name. So UI underscore main window dot PY. Okay, now this won't get confused with either of them because we've got that nice little prefix at the start for user interface. And then when we make our Python file later, which is just going to be called main window, we will have everything we need sitting there ready to go. So I'm going to press enter. If I get no error messages, that's great. And again, remember you do need to toggle the folder open and closed so that you're able to get your new Python file ready to go. So if I was to double click on that one to open it, you can see here is all of my PyQt code that is sitting there ready to go. Uh, we don't need to change any of that whatsoever. So I'm going to leave that folder closed so that I'm not tempted to muck around in there a little bit later. Now what we can do is we can right click on here and say new Python file. Okay, we're just going to call this one main window. Okay, and it will be a .py file because we selected Python file from there. So obviously from here I need to go ahead and build my uh, boilerplate code so that it is super quick and easy for us to be able to um, have an, a window set up. So I would recommend doing what I've got here. So I've just got a little file open in idle. Uh, where I can copy and paste this code from idle into my app here and now my app is basically set up and ready to run. Okay, obviously my horizontal slider functionality isn't built, but if we have a look at that one there, super quick and super easy now because I've imported my system and my widgets, I've imported my queue application and my UI is ready to go as well. Because I keep the same file convention name for each of my files, so UI underscore main window, even these sections here don't need changing. So that's why I like having that boilerplate code ready to go. So the only thing left really to do for our number slider is to sit down and actually set up the signal and slot and then define the function obviously that it's connecting to. So we will do that in our constructor function up here. So in our init file, in our init function, we are going to just add our normal self.ui dot and then we need to find our slider. So you'll remember that we called that number slider. Okay, so self.ui.number slider. Now I need to put my signal in. So my signal in this instance is going to be value changed. Okay, there's quite a few different ones that you can have. You can have things like when the uh, slider is pressed or when it's released and all sorts of things. But in this instance, we just want the one that is value changed. And then we need it to connect to a function. Okay, so we're just going to call this one uh, self.number underscore changed. Okay, now remember we're just pointing to this in memory so we don't actually call the function here so we don't need to put the brackets at the end. And obviously that function doesn't exist because we haven't made it yet. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit further to uh, create my next function. So in this instance, we obviously need to call uh, or define number underscore changed. Okay, uh, that's gonna give us our self in the brackets ready to go. And I just need to put in a little bit of, a tiny little bit of code so that we can get this thing running. So we're gonna have new underscore value. Okay, so creating like a little value here and I'm just gonna call it, I'm just gonna make it a string now, which is gonna be self.ui number slider. And then I need the value. Okay, so all that's doing is now going and grabbing the value from the number slider in our user interface. Okay, and then the last thing I need to do is obviously get that to appear somewhere and change the label that we had up at the top. So I'm going to have self.ui uh, display label. Okay, and then the uh, thing that we need to call here is going to be our set text one, and we're just going to replace that with new value. Now, this is obviously a super simple 
uh, number slider application. So you may need to do some uh, much crazier code uh, here so that you're able to you know, get your value on the label to sit in the place that it needs to or whatever. But because we're just displaying the one individual number, it actually becomes really, really easy for us to build that out. Okay, so from here, we get to just really quickly run our file. So if we go right click on there and say run, Okay, our, our little app appears here and you can see that it's currently set to three with our slider sitting there on the middle tick. And as we drag that one, it changes to each of the different numbers that is above or below. Okay, so I hope that you have uh, learnt how to really quickly build a number slider and the functionality to get that to grab the value out of it and then place it somewhere else. Uh, if you do need to do a little bit more complex stuff with it, you may need to modify this code here so that you can get the value out in the way that you need. Now, I've obviously just cheated the system a little bit there by taking it out as a string so that it's super quick and easy to display here in this tutorial. So hopefully you've learned that and it's nice and easy to implement and I would hope that you might be able to find some value in some of the other tutorials on this playlist as well and I hope to see you over in one of those tutorials soon.